This video will take you through a project about the Global Hotspots Assessment, developed in collaboration between the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis, the Global Environment Facility, and United Nations Industrial Development Organization. When it comes to climate change, some big questions come to mind, such as who's impacted by and who is most vulnerable to climate impacts? How can sustainable development reduce climate risk? And is there a real difference between one and a half and two degrees? The, the aspirational targets of the Paris Agreement? And how can we prioritize assistance and investment to those that need it most? Between our partners, they're managing hundreds of projects, portfolios of billions of dollars in every country of the world and across every sector. Together, we developed the Global Hotspots Assessment to answer some of these critical questions. The framework we developed combines multiple indicators across water, energy, and land sectors, such as water stress, heat waves, changes in crop yields, and habitat degradation. We did the analysis at different levels of climate change, at one and a half, two, and three degrees, and also for three socioeconomic development scenarios to understand changes in population growth and income levels. The framework outlines multiple risks are across the world, and we can also zoom into hotspots areas to understand specifically where the greatest challenges lie. At two degrees of global warming by 2050, we can expect approximately two and a half billion people living in hotspots facing multiple climate and development challenges. At three degrees, this number approximately doubles, but if we keep global temperatures to one and a half degrees, the number of people exposed may be half that. At two degrees, approximately half the global population will be exposed to significant increases in heat stress, cooling demand, and water stress and variability. And one billion people who are predominantly living in rural areas will face challenges related to crop yield reductions, degradation of natural habitats, and significant pollution from fertilizer use. The analysis also helped us identify locations facing multiple overlapping risks, such as droughts, heat stress, and crop yield reductions. And the areas impacted and the number of people impacted significantly increase at higher levels of global warming. This occurs particularly in areas such as Northern Africa, Southeast Africa, South Asia, like India and Pakistan, Southeast Asia, Northeast Brazil and Central America, and the Middle East. Thus, particularly in these locations, we would recommend pursuing ambitious sustainable development action targeted in these at-risk areas, as this will be most effective for reducing vulnerabilities and avoiding climate poverty traps. To make the scientific assessment more accessible to our stakeholders and the general public, in September 2020, we launched hotspotsexplorer.org, an online interactive website where users can visualize and explore the data according to their interests and learn about climate and development challenges around the world. The Hotspots Explorer has two main features. Stories are interactive articles featuring text, images, interactive graphs, and maps. They give an overview and context to some of our key case studies, like the Zambezi and Indus River basins, and also thematic areas of water, energy, and land. But the Explorer is the main feature, an online map to explore all the data used in this assessment. Here we see it in the global context for the multi-sector risk indicator at two degrees and in the central socioeconomic scenario. On the left-hand side, we can see our control panel where we can change the level of climate change impacts and also differences in socioeconomic scenarios. Hover over the little eye icons to understand more about the scenarios and also understand more about different indicators that are used. We can change the indicator if we want to understand 
more about specific challenges such as water stress or habitat degradation. And here we can also change the vulnerability threshold. For example, just the people that are exposed or perhaps people with higher vulnerability, such as those on lower incomes. You can also see when we zoom in, we can click on a particular country or if you like a river basin. Interactive dashboard pops up specific to that country or region and the text gives a description of key development indicators. Underneath, we have an interactive chart and can further explore the data for every country. In this example for Pakistan, top risks are cooling degree days, agricultural water stress and water stress. Currently it shows the number of people impacted but we can also change this to the proportion of people, population impacted, and also the land area. Currently, this chart shows the top three risks for Pakistan, but on the left-hand side, we can see the ranking compared to other global countries. And we can also change which indicators are shown in this chart. And so you can add all of them here to make a better comparison. Finally, you can export this chart as an image or download the, direct, the data directly for this specific country as a simple CSV file. This feature is being further developed into a more extensive dashboard with even richer information for every country and river basin in the world. Another feature of Hotspots Explorer is possibility to do comparison between different indicators and different regions at the same time. In the top right, we can see this little plus icon. We can open multiple contexts of the map and make comparisons between different indicators and regions and scenarios. For example, we could compare Pakistan in different scenarios, or we could change different indicators. And each of these maps can be moved around independently. In the top right, we can also see other controls to change the visualization, such as the map style opacity, and also possibilities to export the map to an image social media sharing, and full screen mode. Finally, on the news and resources page, you can learn more about the work, including where it was featured in the media, read specific scientific papers behind the work, policy briefs, data downloads, and coming soon will be an educator's toolkit so that these resources can be used in a structured way in a classroom environment. I hope you liked this introduction, and if you plan to use Hotspots Explorer in your work, drop us a line as we'd love to hear from you.